Welcome everybody. Today I want to take a look at some basic Photoshop knowledge. I think a lot of our videos, in fact I know a lot of our videos, do some very advanced things in Photoshop. Jeff is incredibly talented in his Photoshopping skills, but what I want to do is fill in a little bit of the basics and go over one of the fundamental things in Photoshop that really all photographers need to know who use Photoshop, and that is layers. So layers in Photoshop are a concept that Lightroom doesn't really have a part of. Lightroom is all based in adjustments and sliders and things like that. Well, Photoshop is based in the world of layers. And a layer, the way that I like to think about it, is basically a stack of things that happen on top of your photo. So the way that I like to think about this is if you have your desk in front of you, physical desk, and you have a print of one of your images, Let's say that you wanted to do something very simple like uh, darken that photograph. Well, there'd be two ways to do that if you actually had a print. Way number one would be to take some like darker spray paint and actually physically spray that darker paint over the top of the print. The problem is when that dries, that, that change is going to be permanently written into the print. The print would be permanently dark once the paint dried. Alternatively though, let's picture that same print on the desk. Then this time let's take a layer of clear transparent paper or material and lay that over top of the print and then do the same spray paint job. So that paint falls on that transparent layer. Now think about this. If we didn't spray paint anything, the purpose of that transparent layer is, is nothing. It's just transparency. But as soon as we lay down paint, no longer are we painting on the actual image itself. And we can look at this in Photoshop. I've got a layer here or a, um, an image here of the Milky Way. And if I was to take a paintbrush with some, let me grab some really obnoxious red paint and just start painting, I'm actually going to be painting red paint onto the image itself. We can see here in my layers panel, and if you can't see your layers panel, you can always go to window layers. That will show you your layers panel wherever you happen to be. If you see your layers panel, I have this layer called background. Well, background is Photoshop's terminology for that print sitting on your desk. And if I'm clicked on the background and I go to paint, I'm physically painting on the print, on the background layer itself. Now, if I was to save this and close this, that would be permanently written into this file. Now, at this point in time, I can very easily go Control Z, Control Z, or Command Z, Command Z, and undo those changes that I made. But again, if I was to save and close this file, that would be part of the image. So that's the bad way to do it. Let's look at the alternative. What I can do now is go up to Layer, New, Layer. Layer new layer is just going to give us some transparent pixels over the top of our image. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it's going to ask me for a name. And I like to name my layers. A lot of people kind of chortle at me for that, but I think it, it helps me stay organized. So I might call this uh, layer for painting, something like that, and hit OK. And now in the layers panel, you'll notice I get a new layer and it's represented by this checkerboard. Now, cool little pro tip, in your layers panel, there are these little eyeballs over to the left. Well, if you, whatever eyeball is on, that's the layer that you're seeing. So right now we're seeing the both layers turned on, which means we're actually seeing through this transparent layer down to the background. Well, if I turn off the background, all we're going to see is transparency, and, and Adobe represents transparency in all of their programs with this checkerboard shape. So we can see this checkerboarding, that means that this is transparency. I can turn back on that background, and we're back to seeing the background. Now again, uh, we are seeing the transparent layer, but there's nothing on it, so we're seeing right through to the background. Think about this just like a stack. We now have our background layer, and then we have a layer of transparency over the top of it. Now check this out. I'm highlighted on the layer for painting layer. I'm clicked on it, and I'm going to go ahead and paint. And now notice that that red paint is falling on the transparent layer, not on the background. Now, if I was clicked on the background, even if the transparent layer is still up there, if I'm clicked on the background, when I paint, that paint's going to go on the background itself. So we're learning something else here. The layer that we're selected on is the layer that the paint is going to go to. And that goes beyond the paintbrush. The layer that you're selected on is the layer that's going to have the effect and the change 
applied to it. So keep that in mind as you're editing, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna undo that paint I put on the background here in Photoshop. It's gonna go Command Z or Control Z. And I'm gonna show you guys, I can now turn the eyeball on and off for my layer for painting layer, and we can turn on and off its visibility. Now here's what's amazing about this. If I was to go in now and save this image and close it and open it a couple years from now, I'm still gonna have that transparent layer with the red paint on it, and I can deactivate or activate that again even after the fact. So this, this protection, you could say, stays with the photograph. Now, I wanna make something super, super clear. Very important that you understand this. All we're doing here is picturing a print on our desk and we're trying to paint the print. We can paint the print directly or we can add a new blank layer, i.e. a transparent piece of paper over our print so that when we paint, the transparent layer gets painted not the image underneath it, it protects it. So that's the first type of layer, is a transparent layer. Um, it's the first type of layer that we need to talk about and, and hopefully that makes some sense, that transparent bits. Now, the next layer I wanna talk about is what's called an adjustment layer. An adjustment layer is a layer that's there for the sole purpose of making something different, changing something in some way. And a couple examples of adjustment layers would be like levels or curves or hue and saturation. They're la layers that make an adjustment to the photograph. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of those. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this layer for painting. Go ahead and get rid of it. Little pro tip there, to delete a layer, you just click and drag the layer down to this itty bitty trash can down at the bottom of the layers panel. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that. Now I want to make a change to this photo. Let's say I wanna do a curves adjustment to this photo. Well, you may have in the past been in the habit of going to image, adjustments, curves, and making your change here. Let's go ahead and apply a pretty heavy curve so we can really see the change. And let's hit okay. The problem with going image adjustments curves is that that change we just made is now permanently written into the image. There's no way to undo it. Um, obviously, at right now, we can go control Z, but if we were to save and close the image, we're losing the ability to undo that change. So I really don't like that technique. Instead, I'm gonna go to layer, new adjustment layer, curves. Same option, same word, but check out what happens here. It asks for a name. I like to name my layers. I'm just gonna say add contrast, something like that. And now the same curve adjustment pops out. But now when I make my adjustment, I'm gonna give it a pretty heavy curve again just so we can see the change. I'm gonna go ahead and click this little arrow to nest away that panel. Now I have a layer on top of my background called add contrast. And again, we learned about the eyeball. If I turn the eyeball on and off on that layer, we can see a before after. With the eyeball off, we're seeing that layer, the background before we made the adjustment. And when we turn the eyeball on, we're seeing what that adjustment does. Now that's kind of cool. But what's cooler is when we save and close this photo, that layer will save with it, which means if we want to later undo this adjustment, we can simply take this whole layer and drag it down to the trash can and undo the adjustment that we just made. Furthermore, this gives us something called a mask, which is something we'll look at in a future video. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and we actually have a little curve picture here. And if I double click this, I can go back into my curve and make some alterations. So you're giving yourself the same adjustability as image adjustments, but the ability to undo those things very quickly and very easily. Now, a couple quick things. You don't always have to go to layer, new adjustment layer, whatever you want. The shorter way is actually to use this little, I call it the uh, white chocolate dipped in dark chocolate Belgian chocolate cookie button down here at the bottom. You can click on that and you have all your same options. And if I click curves down here, it does the very same thing. It gives me a new curves adjustment layer. So just a faster way to do it. You can also use the adjustments panel up here and click the picture of the curve and it does the exact same thing. So there's a lot of ways to do it. But here's the thing, check this out. I've created three curves now all of them can do different things and all of them can be turned on or off independently because they're their own adjustment layer. So blank layer, simply a transparent piece of paper that you're laying over the photo that you can do something with. You can paint on it, you can do something like that. 
Adjustment layers are there to make adjustments, hue and saturation, curves, levels, all of the different adjustment layers that we have. So those are the first two types. The third type would be what I call a pixel bearing layer, a layer that actually has some pixels on it. And the most common example of a pixel bearing layer would be a duplicate of your background. So let's go ahead and reset this. I'm going to delete these adjustment layers here just by dragging them down to the trash can. And now let's say that we wanted to do a little bit of retouching on this photo, right? Let, let me zoom in a little bit. Let's take a look. Let's say that we wanted to remove one of these stars. I don't know why we'd want to, but let's say we wanted to. I could grab the spot healing brush and get a much smaller spot healing brush because that thing's massive. And I could come over one of these stars and click on it and get rid of it very quickly and easily. The problem is, think about it, what layer am I selected on? I'm selected on my background. And I told you guys earlier that the layer that you're highlighted on is the layer that that change happens to. So when I remove that star on my background, I'm permanently removing that star, meaning when I save and I close, if I wanted to undo that star removal, there's no way to do it. And that scares me. So instead, I'm gonna go ahead and undo. Before I do this, I'm going to go to layer, duplicate layer and it's gonna make a duplicate of whatever layer I'm currently clicked on, in this case, my background. And I'm gonna call this retouching and hit OK. And now we have an exact copy of our original. So the way to think about this is you've got that print on your desk. You're now taking a second print of the exact same thing and laying it on top of the first one. And that way, if any problems happen, you can easily just rip that top print off and you've got the original one underneath. It's a really good way to do it. So now check this out. I've got my spot removal tool. I'm just going to go ahead and remove a few of these stars just for the doing of it. So here they are, gone, 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 gone. If I turn the eyeball on and off the background or the retouching layer, excuse me, I can see those stars come back because they are part of the background layer. They're not part of the retouching layer. So a uh, little pro tip too, some people prefer to retouch on a blank layer, not necessarily a background copy. I usually do it to a background copy because I find there's less settings you have to worry about. It's a little bit easier, but I will say this, uh, whenever you duplicate your background, you're doubling the file size of the image. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes you'll have a really big file if you've made a panorama or something like that. As soon as you duplicate that background to do retouching, you've got double the file size, which in some cases is a pretty huge photo. So those are the three basic types of layers. You've got your blank layer, your adjustment layer, and your background copy or your pixel bearing layer. And all three are good for very different things. So hopefully that clears things up a little bit. Um, I find that understanding layers is really key with Photoshop, but really it's all in the layers panel. You got the eyeballs, you've got the what layer are you selected on, the little trash can down here, and then masks are something that are really important. We'll look at those in a future video. One last pro tip I'll give, uh, out of the box, sometimes your layers panel is itty bitty. So I usually like to go to this little uh, four little bars button in the upper right of the layers panel and go to panel options down at the bottom and make my thumbnail size the biggest it possibly can be. It just gives us more room to work in the layers panel and helps you out. I think it defaults to the smallest or uh, the middle one and giving ourselves that extra space can be super nice. So if you liked this video and you found it useful, I would love a thumbs up or a subscribe. Go ahead and hit that button or that button or that button if you liked the video. If you didn't, you know what to do. If you have something else you wanna learn in Photoshop, let me know down in the comments. In fact, if you have questions on this, let me know down in the comments, I'd love to do it. Also, we're working on a swag store. These shirts are gonna be available soon, which is pretty sweet. So I'll, I'll let you guys know when that happens, but make sure you're subscribed to be let know when that finally happens. And lastly, special thanks to Canon. You guys are awesome. Canon provided some awesome video cinema cameras for us to capture this content and bring it to you guys. Thank you, I appreciate it. And you guys are awesome. Keep shooting, keep having fun, and keep editing your photos in Photoshop.